Now, we're going to move on to our next great speaker. Uh, it's Will Kagan from Live Ramp, who has got a great presentation, which I love. It's We Know TV Advertising Works. Now let's prove it. So, Will, you've got a few minutes to tell us how we can prove it. Over to you. <laughs> cool, thank you very much. Um, so, we've all changed how we watch TV. We watch on the move, we watch later. TV is no longer just that box that we point our furniture at. It's moved to a multitude of, multi of different devices, which both change how and where we view. But if you think about it, and even before we start to look at the marketing angle, TV is not like dial-up internet, it's not like VHS or landline. And rather than fading away um, as an aging technology that has been superseded by more advanced or convenient alternatives, TV has actually had a renaissance in the last 15 years. We can look at that through the actual hardware. The TVs themselves, they're bigger, they're better, with clear, crystal clear displays, the immersive experiences, curved screens, integrated apps, and software that integrates with our, the rest of our home, from sound bars and gaming consoles. In fact, we don't just watch our TV anymore. We play on it, we learn on it, and we even talk to it. Then we look at the content. Not only is there more content and choice than ever before, but broadcasters and production companies are now commissioning and developing film quality, long form serial content with high profile film stars that you'd never have seen previously on the TV, just the reserve of the silver screen. And thirdly, we're watching more than ever. And it's not just the result of lockdown. The brilliant team at Thinkbox tell us that despite increased migration of both media attention and indeed media investment to the streaming sites like YouTube, 68% of our video viewed in the UK is still broadcast to TV. It's just the way that we access the content that we love and crucially, the way that's delivered that's changing. It's not necessarily just the box in the corner of the room or the area on the roof. It's now more likely and just as likely to be delivered by internet connectivity. As a result, we need to change how we think about TV as a marketing asset. First, we need to stop thinking about TV only as a device. The traditional TV set is a shared device. Mobiles, laptops, tablets are more personal and we're more likely to be watched by an individual. A recent study has found that men are twice as likely to watch TV in the bathroom or public, and we'll all hope and assume that those locations and the viewing they're watching is about sport and live events. So when you're looking at measuring effectiveness of TV as an advertising channel, you absolutely need to account for that cross-screen viewing. Second, we need to stop thinking about it as a single channel. Over the course of this event, think about how many screens you will end up in front of, and how many times you'll be watching the same, similar, or even different content. We need to look at the fact that TV is not a silo channel anymore. It's increasingly becoming part of the overall digital landscape, and that needs to be treated as such. We've got 15 years of data, 50 years of data, not to mention some great brands that have been built purely by using TV. So we know it works, and we know delivering a message that you can both see and hear drives performance. Now we need to know how many of the people you want to reach have seen your advert, how many times, and that's going to become a crucial data set, which will have value both within the TV ecosystem and beyond those realms. Thirdly, and finally, we need to stop thinking about it exclusively as a quick coverage broadcast medium. Despite all this technological, technological evolution, as marketers, we continue to treat the TV as an advertising medium that we have done for the last 50 years. With the availability of data like never before and the technology available to harness it, we finally have the power to change that and make TV as measurable and addressable as the digital channels we also invest in. This has already been proven. Sky's done a brilliant job in the UK of doing just that, bringing addressability in and bringing in a, an extra thousand new brands who have returned or using TV because of it. The key to measuring the impact of advertising through this wide spanning diverse medium is identity. Connecting the dots of those different interactions across different devices back to a single individual, or more, more likely the TV household. And then combining that viewership data to measurable business outcomes in order to measure the real impact of TV advertising campaigns. By doing this, we are not only answering the question of which half of advertising is working, but where is it working hardest? Who have we reached? How many times do we need to reach them so we can drive that desired behavior, which not only drives the bottom line, across short, medium and long-term plans, but it brings in effectiveness of our full media plan. It's true that here in the UK, the TV cannot be traded as a single block of inventory, but we do have all the assets and all the tools available to make that TV investment measurable and accountable. Looking at it and looking at our current landscape, I think there's probably 
three places where everyone can gain from having a solid data strategy built on a foundation of knowing who we are reaching with our advertising. Number one, we need to be able to connect that exposure to the people in the household so we can see who we have reached, how many times. Number two, we need to recognise people regardless of how they choose to view, irrespective of device, where they're watching and how they're watching. Number three, we need to be able to tie those real business outcomes to those TV exposures. We need to be able to see what was driven by our campaign and what has been driven by our external factors. We need to really be able to drive down to how is TV affecting our business outcomes. From here, we can move budgets accordingly. We can look at efficiency, we can look at effectiveness, and we can move the most effective medium to where we need it most. We can make sure that we are not undersaturating or oversaturating our audience with the wrong message or the right message. And all of this can only bring in greater efficacy in a time when we need to make sure that we're all balancing the books and using our budgets as well as we can. The theme of this event is emerging stronger. And I think it can be fittingly applied to TV. We've been urged by many quarters to keep investing in television because um, we know it works. And it's a testament to its proven ability to, subver to, to survive economic downturns as the industry shifts. We now need to start playing in this small but growing pool of addressable and measurable inventory so we can learn how to plan and how to use TV for the future. Um, it's been a mainstay of the advertising world for as long as we can all remember. And now with exciting new capabilities, we need to make sure that TV emerges stronger than ever. Thank you so much. Great talk. So let's go through the questions. Many coming in, and lots of these are around our CCV, our sort of uh, obviously it's the hottest thing around at the moment. Alexis says there's a lot of great stuff talked about CCV, and I totally understand and get all your points. However, w despite the high profile announcements from broadcasters like ITV, when you go and try and buy it, it's not that easy. Do we have an inventory problem with CCV? I don't think we have an inventory problem. Um, I don't think we potentially have an identity problem. What we do have is we have all the assets in terms of broadcaster VOD who have got their own assets. They have the ability to leverage those assets. It's just how they make those assets available and how they link that data to their inventory. Um, as I've already said, I think measuring our TV investment across all screens may come ahead of trading across all screens. Mm -hmm. But what it should always deliver is the ability to see who we're reaching, how many times we're reaching, and where we can be most effective. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Abby asks, she says, have developments in TV recently, like CTV or YouTube on TV, etc., started to level the playing ground, i.e. can smaller brands now get involved in TV finally? Yeah, absolutely. I think, once again, looking at Sky, they've done a great job of this. They've started to take that data they have from the set-top boxes and they're beginning to bring in those geolocation targeting so people can use those smaller budgets to reach only the households they want. We've already seen it in some aspects in CTV. And as we see CTV growing and the addressability, the addressable nature of CTV growing, I think it will allow those brands, especially some of those direct-to-consumer brands, to migrate, one, from where they're currently working on social, into the programmatic ecosystem, including CTV. Fantastic. Uh, one here from uh, Samantha, who asks, LifeRamp's obviously a global company. How is the UK doing compared to other countries in Europe in terms of developing our new TV ecosystem? <laughs> yeah, we do have a slightly different um, ecosystem than some of the other places. <laughs> but LiveRamp are doing well here in Europe. In fact, we've started to work very closely with some of our big telcos over in France. We recently launched with one of the top three telcos be able to look at addressability and measurability on a household level in France. Um, we'll, we are already working with some of the big broadcasters here in the UK to make sure that data from the brands who work with LiveRamp can then be made addressable where they want to activate their data. Fantastic. Well, we're out of time. Thank you so much. Thanks for asking the question in your presentation. Thank you. Goodbye.